Hey, it's Levi here. I'm a longtime musician and a big fan of trying to fix things myself. So in this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to replace a faulty pot in your guitar. So picture this, you're jamming with your buddies, everything's going fine, and then when it comes time for you to do a solo, you turn up your guitar and it cuts out. This is the type of thing that we don't want to have happen, but it happens to most of everyone at some point with their guitars. And sometimes students of mine come to me telling me that their volume knob is broken, something isn't working quite right. And so I wanted to make this video as a tutorial so you can learn how to do it just like I do myself when I have something go wrong with my volume pot on my guitar. Now there's so many things that could be going wrong with your guitar electronics. So I recommend that you do some searching online, search up what the symptoms you're dealing with with your guitar and see what you can find on forums because sometimes you might not actually need to replace a pot, right? If you're dealing with some crackling or some scratchiness, typically all you gotta do is put some electrical contact cleaner in. Sometimes if you're dealing with cutting out, it could be a short from wires touching each other. and if you have active pickups, you could just have a dead battery. So you want to think critically and try to determine where the problem is coming from. And if you believe that the pot is bad, then go ahead and try replacing it. So in order to understand how to fix this properly, I think it's useful to understand what a pot is and what it does. So essentially, pot is short for potentiometer and it's kind of like a switch, but instead of it being just on and off, there's all this in between information that we can use. And that's why potentiometers are used for volume knobs, tone pots, EQ controls, things like that. So to understand what all these things do, let's take a closer look. So when you're looking at the back of the pot, you'll see three terminals. On the far left side, I like to think of that as my input. And then on the middle, I like to think of that one as my output. The third terminal should be wired to ground, which oftentimes is just to the back of the pot. Also, you might see a bunch of wires soldered to the back of the pot, and that is your ground. So everything in the guitar has to be grounded, and that's why you'll see a whole bunch of wires going to the back of the pot as well. I like to try to handle the terminals first and then deal with all the grounding wires afterwards. And there's many different types of circuits for guitars and a lot of different options on how they can be wired. So what I recommend that you do, if you need to know what your wiring diagram is, is search it up online. There's websites like guitarelectronics.com that have a bunch of wiring diagrams for different wiring situations. Looking up the circuit diagram can help you get a greater understanding of where all of these lines are going to. So in order to do this repair, we're gonna get into soldering. So you wanna have a soldering iron, a soldering pick or a set of picks, some sort of stand or holder for your soldering iron, wire strippers, an adjustable wrench or a set of sockets, wet paper towel to wipe the soldering iron on. It helps to clean a lot of the debris off, tinning flux and electrical solder. It'll also help to have an assortment of screwdrivers so you can remove your back plate and electrical tape so you can put the wires where you want them. Something that comes in handy whenever I'm soldering is this guy here, it's called a helping hands and basically it's got these little clamps and a magnifying glass. It's really, really great for basically freeing your hands up. And if you're soldering, you should probably do that in a well ventilated area. You don't want to be breathing the smoke and fumes that come off of the burning solder. First, we've got to take off this plate to get access to the wiring. On some guitars, you might have to take off the pick guard. At first glance, you can see this mess of cables here. Now, what we want to try to do is focus specifically on the area that we're trying to repair. So if we look closely at the volume pot, we'll see all the connections that I had laid out earlier in the video. We've got a small black wire here, a small red wire here. That third terminal is just soldered to the back of the pot and we've got this cluster of black wires which are grounded to the back of the pot. I like to tape off some of these wires just so they're out of the way and I don't need to hold them in place anymore. The more wire I can get out of the way, the better. So it looks pretty rough and messy, but it's important basically to get this stuff out of the way so I can reach my soldering iron, which I don't have a precision tip for this one. I just run with that, you know? So we gotta be really careful that we don't basically melt the other wires or anything like that. Woo, that's hot. 
So I've got my replacement pot here. And one of the first things that you wanna kinda watch out for is the size of the shaft here. I believe this shaft is small enough, so it should be fine. But if you're basically upgrading your pot from a you know cheap one like this uh, to a more expensive one, uh, sometimes they have bigger shafts. So if you run into that, you may have to drill your hole larger in the top of the guitar. And that's a whole process, but hopefully it won't be an issue for us in this repair. So the pot that I'm putting in is basically an Audio 500K pot. Uh, this is an alpha pot, so it's good. <laughs> it's good enough. And it says right there, A 500K. You might run across like B 500K. I believe those are linear taper pots. There's a whole bunch of information on the, on the web about that. Read about it if you're interested. I like to stick with audio taper pots. So I have preheated my soldering iron and all I'm gonna try to do right now is just desolder the two wires that are connected here on each terminal. So I'm gonna start with the black one. Uh, my goal here is to heat up the terminal, not the wire. Okay, so I'm gonna try to move this a little bit, try to aim very carefully down in there. I'm on the terminal heated it up just for like not even a second and it was hot enough to melt the solder. I've got that removed and then, all right, red is free. Okay, so now there's basically nothing connected to the terminals and I've now got this big blob of grounding wires that I've got to take off. So I'm basically just gonna heat up the bottom of that pot a little bit and I'm gonna use my little tool just to try to peel that off a little bit. So I've got some. You gotta keep track of what your initial black wire was, because all of these other ones are black, but they're all gonna be grounded to the thing. So it might be useful to like, you know, know where each of these things is coming from. Uh, I'll get these last two black ones off, and then we've got this pot desoldered the back of that pot, and peel, peel, and it's off. Pretty simple, pretty quick. I do have to admit, it does take a little bit of finesse with the soldering iron. I have done this quite a bit before and I've burned things like over and over and over again. I've melted through wires and stuff. So you just gotta be careful and precise with your movements and what you're doing exactly. But now that we've at least got all the wires disconnected from this pot, I can flip the guitar over and remove the pot. Okay, so. In this case, I can just remove this one. And if you're a real pro, you can just use a socket for this one. I use this adjustable wrench. All we really need is just to break it loose so we can spin it with our hands. Then I can push that through like that. And there goes our pot. All right, so I took the old pot off. Um, yeah, this is actually um, a nice CTS pot, but it's just gone bad, uh, unfortunate, because these are actually quite nice. This helps keep the, keep the pot in place. It essentially um, is like a lock washer. Okay, so I've got a little bit of an order of things here. I've got a nut, a washer, and then the lock washer. Basically, I'm just kind of doing that so, so it sticks out just enough and that it locks in place. Tighten this all the way down. Try to drop that in the hole there, like that. It fits. Pressing as I flip. There we go, and now I've got enough sticking out there, so I'm gonna put washer on there, and then put the nut on there. Okay, and now I can just basically tighten this. Now one thing to be mindful of is you don't wanna go super, super tight. You just gotta have it totally, you know, snug. Not gonna move around on you but not so tight that you're cracking the finish or something, right? And you'll feel it, you know, you'll feel that that uh, resistance. Let's check that. These are still pointing the direction we want, so that is good. I'm just gonna put the cap on just like that. Knob cover, there we go. Flipping it over to the back. Now it's time to re-solder. So I wanna give myself the best shot I can with getting clean solders, and that involves stripping these wires back a little bit. So I'm gonna try to very carefully cut this one and then strip it. Super, super thin wire using my thinnest setting on my wire stripper, 22 gauge. There we go, we've got a little bit of wire showing now. So now that I'm at the stage that I'm gonna apply solder, I pulled out the tinning flux and the electrical solder. So what we have to do is we have to essentially have clean surfaces, which they are, 
we have to apply flux to them and then solder, and then we can heat them up and join them. Flux is an important part of the process because without flux, the solder will not bond. So keep that in mind, make sure you use flux if you're actually soldering stuff. So what I'll typically do is I'll just dip the wire in the flux, then I'll heat it for a sec, that'll kind of bubble up. Then you can apply a little bit of solder to that wire. So I'm just gonna kind of sandwich it real quick, just a little dab. Making sure not to breathe the smoke that comes out of that. All right, I've got this other piece here that I need to apply a bit of flux to. Just gonna do that. Sometimes when you're re-soldering stuff, if something's like undone and then redone, sometimes you can get away with not uh, adding flux. But when you're starting a new solder, like from a clean wire, I think it's good practice to use flux before you apply your solder. That's good, good and quick. And I actually have a bit of solder on the iron that I might be able to use like, just like that. Gets pretty crispy pretty quick. So what I'm trying to do now is prepare the terminals that are inside here, but I can't like dip them in flux like that, right? So I'm actually gonna try to use, just grab a little bit on this toothpick get a little bit on each terminal. Then I'm gonna tap it with the soldering iron. Again, being very, very precise. So I'm planting my elbow. Tap there. Tap there. Trying not to touch anything else. The terminals have holes in them. So I like to make sure that it actually does have the hole in it and that it's not sealed with solder. Reason why I like to do that is if I can kind of like twist the wire around that terminal, I find that's a good way to get it to hold before I solder it. Cool, I can definitely see through that hole there. So that's good. Basically try to just fish this wire through that hole. At this stage, it's kind of threaded through there, but I think what I'm gonna have to do actually is solder it now. All right, so I'm using this little pick here. I'm gonna try to use that just to get that as tight in place as I can. Okay. And just like that, we've got a solder joint. All right, and so for this terminal, which one I will call the black terminal, I'm gonna try to get some solder onto there. There we go and just try to get it looking a little better. I'm gonna use a little bit of flux. Try to tidy up this rough bit. So you're not supposed to blow on that stuff because it creates little perforations in the solder. So I'm just doing that to try to clear the smoke away and make sure that I'm not breathing it in. But you basically, we've got a big black wire. This is my ground. And I've got this little black wire. This is the wire that'll carry the signal to the input of this pot. So we're gonna connect that right now. This is like almost perfect. I'm just gonna put a little like, a little bend in this wire so I can get it kind of through the terminal. Now that it's sitting in there quite nicely, all I gotta do is just heat it up quick, like for a sec hold it in a way that it's not gonna spring back out of place right after we, you know, let go of it. As it cools, I'm trying to just hold it in the spot so it doesn't move. And that works. Gentle pull and then we're fine. Great. Before moving on, ensure that the last terminal is wired to ground. You can either bend the terminal and solder it or cut a small piece of wire and use that as a joining piece. All right, so while we're here, I'm gonna try to get this one there, but should be easy. Just kind of clamp that down to there. Solder on solder, it'll join up. There we go. Cool. So now I've got the pot wired up like both terminals. They seem fine from what I can tell. They're connected quite well. And then I'm just gonna connect all those grounds and there you have it, folks. So it's a little bit challenging for sure, you know, uh, but at the same time, you shouldn't fear this stuff, you know, just try it and 
if, if you like honestly this was wired professionally before and it's it's still kind of a mess you know it's not that nice <laughs> so um it's you know you, you, you will get better at it the more you do this kind of stuff but uh you know don't don't worry if it's not uh, if it's not perfect first time you try to do it it might not come out right and that's okay but if you know how to do this stuff yourself, I think you'll be a lot better off as a guitar player because you know you can basically fix your own stuff at that point. Fit like that, and then I'm just gonna heat it. It's there. Pinning it, solder, lift. Don't blow on it. There we go. Take that, pin it down with the others, soldering that into place. And I believe we've got a good bond there. Right. Heat it up, heat it up, let it go. So now that we're done soldering, we wanna test the guitar. So I'll plug in the guitar through an amp. I'm gonna start off by having the volume all the way up. It works. And then of course, turn the volume all the way down. And then it's silent. At this point, We've got it, we've done the repair correctly. Mission accomplished. So I hope that this helps you kind of get started with the world of soldering your own electrical guitar problems. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you on the next one. If you like my videos, if you wanna see more stuff like this, let me know. So if you made it to this point in the video, I super appreciate your viewership. Uh, I'll get you to hit the like button. Consider subscribing if you wanna see more of my stuff. And uh, yeah, until then, I've gotta run. Catch you on the next one. Bye for now, everyone. See you later.